Let's go ahead now and access the Garmin DNR program. The first thing to take note of when you fire up the Minnesota DNR Garmin program is right here. Make sure your GPS unit is recognized by your computer. If it's not, go to the GPS tab and set the port. Choose one of the ports until your computer recognizes your GPS unit. If it doesn't recognize your GPS unit, you may need some sort of driver. The second thing to do is to go over here to the file menu and set the projection. I like to set my projection to none. In other words, projections are important, but I like to have my GIS deal with the projections rather than the GPS deal with the projections. As you can see, my projection is set to World Geodetic System 1984 as the datum and no projection. There are certain exceptions though. Sometimes you would ideally want to have your final shape files that you're analyzing in your GIS be in a projected coordinate system right from the get-go. So for example, it's, if you were interested in figuring out your and computing your speed over ground, let's say in meters per second, then in that case you might want to use a projected coordinate system like UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator. In my case it's going to be zone 13 north, so it's important to know what the zone is. Anyway, in that case you would have two additional fields, northings and eastings, and they're both given in meters. Now that you've got those two fields in your projected coordinate system, then you can calculate things like speed over ground in meters per second. So there are lots of exceptions. The important thing is to know why you want to save in certain projections and then go ahead and do it. Now that the computer recognizes the GPS is plugged in to the USB port, in my case, I'm, go I'm ready to go ahead and download the waypoints. So I'm going to click on the waypoints tab and then download. This is the GPS that I use in quite a few of my field trips. So I have quite a few waypoints on here, 298 at the moment. It's best not to do anything else on your computer, I've learned from experience, while these waypoints and later on while the track points are being downloaded. Remember that you're using a port, a cable, and a single or multiple drivers to bring that data over via cable. This is a notoriously complicated operation for a computer. And so I've learned from experience that it's best not to do anything else on the computer while those points are coming over. When it's done, you'll receive a notice like I have right here. Received, in my case, 298 records. I'm going to go ahead and say OK there. I'm going to scroll down. And then I'm going to scroll up to find the points that I'm interested in. In my case, I'm really only interested in saving a few of these. I remember from being outside, and this is where it's important to keep track of what you're collecting and what the points are named, but waypoint 285, 286, through 290 are the ones that I'm interested in. To verify, I can scroll to the right here. I'm going to highlight the points that I'm interested in saving. In my case, 285, 286, 287, 288, and waypoint 290. I'm using the ident field. That is the field that uh, the waypoints are saved out in the field. Another note here is that there are a whole bunch of fields that the DNR Garmin program automatically inserts. And you're welcome to use those fields if you need to later on. Okay, now that I've highlighted the particular waypoints that I'm interested in saving, I'm going to save it in a variety of different ways. I'm going to go to File, Save to File. Once you find your location that you want to store the data in, give it a logical name and remember what you're saving. In my case, I'm saving it as an ArcView shapefile, unprojected, 
So it's a dot shape. I'm going to call it the Esri Broomfield Waypoints dot shape. Save that. It says the file was written successfully. Great. So that's step one. I've got a shape file of, in my case, five different waypoints. Great. Now on to the track. Track download. I've got even more track points than waypoints. In my case, I've got 12,682 track points. Again, it's best not to do anything on the computer until these things have downloaded. I'm done. The track points have all been recorded. Now I need to save the particular track that I'm interested in. And in my case, I know that I saved that track as a 16 May 2011 track saved file. So I'm going to go down here to ident until I can find my 16 May 2011. Now I've got my 16 May 2011 set of track points. I've got 11 of those. I've got them highlighted. I'm going to go ahead now and say save to file. And just like I did with my waypoints, I'm going to save it as a unprojected shape file. I'm going to this time call it Esri Broomfield Track Points because that's what it is. And I want them saved as points. So I'm going to select that on the next menu. I get a notice that the file was written successfully. Great. I'm going to save it one more time though. I always like to have a line as well as the points. So let's go ahead and save it one more time. Again as an under, unprojected shape file. I'm going to call it Esri Broomfield Track Line. And you probably know what I'm going to do at the next step. Now that I've called it Track Line, the next step is make sure that it's going to be saved as a line file. OK. I receive a notice that it was written successfully. Great. Now I've got three files. A waypoints point file, a track points point file, and a track line file. That's all there is to it. Now we're ready to map and analyze our data.